Good morning. Our book today is called Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel. It is by Viv Virginia Lee Burton. And she wrote the book and she illustrated it. Mike Mulligan had a steam shovel, a beautiful red steam shovel. Her name was Mary Ann. Mike Mulligan was a very proud of Mary Ann. He always said that she could dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. But he had never been quite sure that this was true. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann had been digging together for years and years. Mike Mulligan took such good care of Mary Ann, she never grew old. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who dug the great canals for the big boats to sail through. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann who some and others who cut through the high mountains so that the trains could go through. Tells you how old this book is. Steam trains. <clears throat> it was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who lowered the hills and straightened the curves to make the long highways for automobiles. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who smoothed out the ground and filled in the holes to make the landing fields for airplanes. And it was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who dug the deep holes for the cellars of the tall skyscrapers in the big cities. When people used to stop and watch them, Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann used to dig a little faster and a little better. The more people stopped, the faster and better they dug. Some days they would keep as many as 37 trucks busy taking away the dirt that they had dug. That's a lot of dirt. Then along came the new gasoline shovels and the new electric shovels and the new diesel motor shovels and took all the jobs away from the steam shovels. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann were very sad. Look, she's crying tears. All of the other steam shovels were being sold for junk or left in the old gravel pits to rust and fall apart. Mike loved Mary Ann. He couldn't do that to her. He had taken such good care of her that she could still dig as many in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. At least he thought she could, but he wasn't quite sure. Everywhere they went, the new gas shovels and the new electric shovels and the new diesel motor shovels had all the jobs. Nobody wanted Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann anymore. Then one day, Mike read in a newspaper that a town of Popperville was going to build a new town hall. We are going to dig the cellar of that town hall, said Mike to Mary Ann, and off they started. They left the canals and the railroads and the highways and the airports and the big cities where no one wanted them anymore, and they went into the country. They crawled along slowly up hills and down hills, and they came to the little town of Popperville. Oh, lots of text. Here's our picture. When they got there, they found that the select men were just deciding who should dig the cellar for the new town hall. Mike Mulligan spoke to Henry B. Swap, 
one of the selectmen. I heard, he said, that you are going to build a new town hall. Marianne and I will deal the cellar for you in just one day. What? said Henry B. Swap. Dig a cellar in a day? It would take a hundred men at least a week to dig the cellar out for a new hall, town hall. Sure, said Mike, but Mary Ann can dig as much in a day as a hundred men can dig in a week. Though he'd never been quite sure that this was true. Then he added, if we can't do it, you won't have to pay. Henry B. Swap thought that this would be an easy way to get part of the cellar dug out for nothing. So he smiled rather in a mad, rather mean way and gave the job of digging the cellar to the new town hall to Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. They started in the early in the next morning, just as the sun was coming up. Soon the little boy came along. Do you think you'll finish by sundown, he said to Mike Mulligan. Sure, said Mike, if you stay and watch us. We always work faster and better when someone is watching us. And so the little boy stayed to watch. Here's our little boy down here with his doggo. And there they are just starting out. Then Mrs. McGillicuddy, Henry B. Swab, and the town constable came over to see what was happening, and they stayed to watch. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dug a little faster and a little better. This gave the little boy a good idea. He ran off to tell the postman with the morning mail, the telegraph boy on his bicycle, the milkman with his cart and horse, doctor on his way home and the farmer and his family coming into town for the day and they all stopped and stayed to watch. That made Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dig a little faster and a little better. They finished the first corner neat and square but the sun was getting higher. There they are with the first corner. Clang, clang, clang! The fire department arrived. They'd seen the smoke thought there was a fire. Then the little boy said, why don't you stay and watch? So the fire department of Popperville stayed to watch Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. And when they heard the fire en engine, the children in the school across the street couldn't keep their eyes on their lessons. The teacher called a long recess and the whole school came out to watch. That made Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dig still faster and still better. They finished the second corner neat and square, but the sun was right up in the top of the sky. Now the girl who answered the telephone called up the next town of Bangerville and Bopperville and Kipperville and Copperville and told them what was happening in Popperville. All the people came over to see if Mike Mulligan and the steam shovel could dig the cellar in just one day. The more people came, the faster Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dug. But they would have to hurry. They were only halfway through and the sun was beginning to go down. They finished the third corner, neat and square. Never had Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann had so many people watch them. And never had they dug so fast and well. And never had the sun seemed to go down so fast. Hurry, Mike Mulligan, hurry, hurry, shouted the little boy. There's not much more time. Dirt was flying everywhere, and the smoke and steam were so thick that the people could hardly see anything. But listen, bang, bang, crash, slam, louder and louder and faster and faster. Then suddenly, it was quiet. Slowly, the dirt settled down. The smoke and the steam cleared away, and there was a cellar all finished. Four corners, neat and square, four, wall, four walls straight down, and Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann at the bottom, and the sun was just going down behind the hill. Hooray, shouted the people, hooray for Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. They had dug the cellar in just one day. Suddenly, 
the little boy said, how are they going to get out? That's right, said Mrs. McGillicuddy to Henry B. Swap. How is he going to get that steam shovel out? Henry B. Swap didn't answer, but smiled in a rather mean way. Then everyone said, how are they going to get out? Hi, Mike Mulligan, how are you going to get your steam shovel out? Mike Mulligan looked around the four square walls and four corners, and he said, We've dug so fast and we've dug so well that we've quite forgotten to leave a way out. Nothing like this had ever happened to Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann before, and they didn't know what to do. There's a conundrum. Here's all our folks talking about it. Nothing like this had ever happened before in Popperville. Everyone started talking at once, and everybody had a different idea. And everybody thought that his idea was the best. They talked, and they talked, and they argued, and they fought, till they were all worn out. And still, no one knew how to get Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann out of the cellar they had dug. Then Henry B. Swap said, The job isn't finished because Mary Ann isn't out of the cellar, so Mike Mulligan won't get paid. And he smiled again in a rather mean way. Now, the little boy, who had been keeping very quiet, had another good idea. He said, Why couldn't we leave Mary Ann in the cellar and build the new town hall above her? Let her be the furnace for the new town hall, and let Mike Mulligan be the janitor. Then you wouldn't have to buy a new furnace and we could pay Mike Mulligan for digging the cellar in just one day. Why not, said Henry B. Swap, and he smiled in a way that was not quite so mean. Why not, said Mrs. McGillicuddy. Why not, said the town constable. Why not, said all the people. So they found a ladder and climbed down into the cellar to ask Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. Why not, said Mike Mulligan, and so it was decided, and everyone was happy. They built a new town hall right over Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann, and it was finished before winter. Every day, the little boy goes over to see Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann, and Mrs. McGillicuddy takes him a nice, nice hot apple pies. As for Henry B. Swap, he spends most of his time in the cellar of the new town hall, listening to the stories that Mike Mulligan has to tell, and smiling in a way that isn't mean at all. Now, when you go to Popperville, be sure to go down in the cellar of the new town hall. There they'll be, Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann, Mike in his rocking chair, smoking his pipe, and Mary Ann beside him, warming up the meeting in the new town hall. And that is the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye for now.